Ah, show to this. Not sure the guitar's quite in tune, but it's close enough. <laughs> Um, do me a favour, put your, your laptop screen down, will you, honey? Because every time I go to the big screen to show anything, all I can see is your FUD book page. Just Probably don't want that. Set That's better. Right, so here's an example of how you do the popping cherries formula. And that, and that was from which cherry song? Well, you can hear there. You listen to that and it sounds pretty boring. Mm. But, um, this is the basis of pretty much all popping cherry songs. Um, yes. Again, when it's so and it's, it's shite, nothing, but when you put the two of them together. Sounds kind of like music. Mm. And if you listen to pretty much any popping cherry song, you'll hear that combination of chords and we Austin Nantos behind them. Again, nothing very interesting we go in there, just uh, descending uh, chord progression, but when you put the other bit over it So 
sounds even better when you play it in time. But, <laughs> um, is the basis of all Pop and Cherry songs and Austin that all with a you know, it repeats the same notes over and over again uh, and doesn't move with a moving chord progression behind it. <sighs> kind of taken from if you listen to um, this is really um, where it kind of comes from originally if you listen to White Side Sisters and Mercy that's it there No, I can't remember it quite right. Um, and I think I made it more difficult for myself than it needs to be by doing the. But do it the other way around, do the chords first, it should be easier. In the heat of the day. When I close my eyes, when I look your way, when I meet the fear that lies inside, when I hear you say, Basically the exact same technique Andrew Eldritch White using it. It's the exact same technique you used to get a popping cherry song. I'd love to be able to say that's a coincidence. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um the typo negative as well, we took quite a lot from them. Um Whipstick stamps, a glass of red wine. I am your servant, may I light your cigarette? And they had um, a piano riff repeating over and over. So, so, quite often used technique, but very effective. And if it works, why not use it? <laughs> Indeed. I 
think that's one of the things that's really unique about cherries. And well, one of the things that one th one of the things that I think is really unique about cherries is the wide sphere of influences within the band in terms of musicality. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you're talking kind of goth, alt rock, yeah, typo, Sisters of Mercy, that sort right. of thing. My um, musical um, influences are very, very far and wide. I remember the first, the first two albums I ever bought on vinyl were Adam and the Ants, Prince Charming, mm -hmm. and Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast. Yep. That was the first albums I bought on um, vinyl. The first two albums I bought on cassette were Queens of Kind of Magic, and Bon Jovi Slippery From Wet. Mm -hmm. The first CD I bought was Queen's of Kind of Magic because I played the tape so much I killed it. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to buy it on CD. Um, but I mean, my influences range from 80s pop through to symphonic metal. Yeah, um, I the first band I remember buying anything of was Zaha. Um, I thought the sun always shines on TV. Oh, it was a brilliant band. Fucking superb Brilliant song. band. Seen them live. Phenomenal. Oh, you've seen them live? I saw them live. They toured, they toured um, before lockdown. They toured um, and they played Hunting High and Low, the album that's yeah. off. They yeah. played Hunting High and Low start to finish. Yeah. Had a short interval. And then did a greatest hit set for the second half, and they oh, were nice. just absolutely. Well, they, they basically they, they came out in the second half and piled straight into I've been losing you, and I was just like, No, that's a yeah, great song. And love it. That, that's a superb <laughs> album, in my opinion. That's a best Schedule album. Days. Nice. I would agree. Yep. Schedule Days is brilliant because you've got, you've, I mean, the title track, Schedule Days, is a <laughs> belter. Uh, yeah. And it goes straight into I've Been Losing You. Yeah, yeah. And you get Manhattan Skyline you know, on there as well. Aye. And Cry Wolf. Cry it's just Wolf, art. Yep. Brilliant. Uh, maybe, maybe I like yeah. that song. Um, I just wrote that. So yeah. it was very synth driven. Have you heard the cover they did of the Everly Brothers Crying in the Rain? I have. It's on one of the it's on one of the later albums. It is absolutely <laughs> stunning. It's an absolute belter of a track. But in, in terms of in terms of players, in, in terms of in terms of bass players, um, the main influence has always been John Deacon. Right. The guy's just an absolute genius. Who did that? Uh, like bass player wise, um, uh, John Ed Twistle, obviously oh. John Paul Jones. Mm. Uh, very cliched, but um, I, I, I was into machine music as well, though. Like, um, like the bass lines I've done are always very syncopated, very um, almost machine like themselves. Um, I like acid house music, mm. bomb the bass, um, TLF, uh, the shaman, I really love the shaman. Uh, and as you say, wide influences from there to white Scandinavian black metal. Yeah. Like Dark Drone, uh, Dark Drone's the one everyone likes. Um, who's into this kind of thing? Uh, Boys in a Northern Sky. I think that's a fucking classic that album. Um, like the um, the Moonstruck stuff I did. That sound was basically mm. kind of a direct lift from that their kind of productions. I mean, we recently, recently, I've been recently thanks to Glenn, yeah. I've got into Nightwish mm -hmm. and listening to them, and they are the long term bass player Marco Hiatala. Phenomenal, right? Great sound, phenomenal touch, just brilliant, brilliant player. And again, a bit like, a lot like John Deacon, and that when you when you delve into the bass lines, they're not as easy as you think. Yeah, yeah. So these are like, I, yeah, this is going to take a while. Take a breath, start again. <laughs> but another guy, another guy that I've always admired, I've always, I always admired the guys at the, the session players, the guys that can just turn up and do anything. Yeah. Likes a Nathan East, who I've seen playing with everybody from, he tours with Eric Clapton regularly. 
But I mean, I've seen him play with Toto, mm -hmm. with Phil Collins, with Joe Satriani. It's just the it, diaspora of able to do that. I mean, someone like Pino Palladino, everybody knows him, but don't know him because if you've ever heard the Paul Young track, whatever, mm -hmm. I've my heart, that gorgeous, fretless bass part, that him, that? that's him. Last time I saw him, he was gigging with the Who. He'd, 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 he'd um, oh, he, he had filled in Mr. Entwistle's shoes right. and was just standing there, grooving away at the back of the stage, just like, okay, you really are Nobody amazing. Music, music. And the scary thing is, he can't read a note. Right. Can't read a note of music, Piero Palladino. That's something that would encourage him. He can't um, read a note. One of my favourite bass players is actually Roger Waters, and he never played fancy rhythm. Yeah. But he just had this fantastic ability to know um, when to play and when not to when play to and up. how to like bring things in and build them up and strip them down and but then as as you say, like start to your Pink Floyd song apart, like um me and my pals did a cover of Mother a few years mm. ago and it was a Fucking nightmare to mm. play. It goes from a 5 8 to a 6 8 to a fucking. I can't even remember where it goes after that. It goes through about five different time signatures. Even if you listen to even if you listen to the more modern stuff after the band fractured mm. and go back together, the bass stuff on the latter albums is a mix, is a mixture of um, Dave Gilmar yeah. and Guy Pratt. Yeah. Who is, and that's another guy. Um, I mean, he's he's he, he sort of came to prominence with Floyd, but has played with Brian Ferry and you know multiple artists. He's also a very very funny guy to go and see live. He does a stand up show, oh, right. and some of the stories he tells some of the stories he tells are absolutely hilarious. <laughs> about, a bit about mu musical misadventures with him, um, everybody from Michael Jackson to Madonna and various other people. There were, yeah. and he tells quite a funny one about Waters as well. But um, yeah. That's for that's for another day. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we do a cut there because that's about twenty minutes. Yeah. Right.